Breitbart had helped the Huffington Post get set up, and his idea was that he was going to launch the Huffington, Huffington Post of the right. Um, and, and, um, and so he was setting it up, and um, his, his very close friend was Steve Bannon. And Bannon had been in investment banking. So Bannon got the Mercers to put $10 million into turning this uh, venture into something that was really going to pack a punch. Um, and, and, and they were just about to launch it in a big day, they, a big way. They were a few days away from it when Andrew Breitbart died. Um, that was in March of 2012. He was only 43, and he had a sudden massive heart attack. And so this, this operation was just about to go big. Um, it was leaderless, and that's when Steve Bannon stepped in and became the head of Breitbart News. And in Bannon's hands, it became a force of uh, economic nationalism and, in some people's view, white supremacism. It ran, um, a, a, you know, a, a regular feature on black crime. It, um, it hosted and, and pretty much launched the career of Milo Yiannopoulos, who's sort of infamous for his kind of juvenile attacks on, on women and, and uh, immigrants and God knows what. You know, just it, it became a, um, a, as Bannon had said, a platform for the alt-right, meaning the alternative to the old right, a new right that was far more angry and um, aggressive about others people who were not just kind of the, the, the white uh, sort of conservatives like themselves.